Okay, to finish off my Desmond Tutu, Tutu stuff silly with socks, I want to just reassert his hat in the back here. Kind of a through line. Some of that strong color. Okay, so now I want to put his glasses in. Now I could just lock my layers. This is usually how I would do details like facial hair or glasses. And I would just try painting them in at a pretty strong opacity, right? So. Let's see, let's just do the dark. Let's say they come out this way, and then they frame the face like this, kind of sketchy. The bridge is across here, comes in here, cuts across there, and around. Same way I would do, like if you had a goatee or something. Right? And then I would find the highlights, I paint those in on top because they're metallic. Those highlights are very sharp. Okay. And then I can see, okay, what does it look like with them, without them? Yeah, they definitely help. So now I have to kind of carve them out, right? But another way I could do it, just kind of reviewing what we did when we initially set it up, because proportions matter. And the problem is the distortions of my portrait, you know, with how wide his eyes are apart, things like that, don't quite match up with the mechanical nature of glasses, right, for this pose. So there's a few things I could try. One thing I can try is to turn off everything and then hold down, turn off the black, back, the white background as well. Hold down um, option again and say layer merge visible. So I have kind of a combined layer that I can play with underneath my glasses. And then with that combined layer that I copied, I can take this whole chunk of eye, whole chunk of the side of the face and basically transform it warp it, push that eye into a better place. <laughs> and basically what happened is that I got smaller and smaller as I painted it. And so they, they pushed uh, further and further apart from each other. It's not to say it's good or bad, but it doesn't, the glasses make that um, harder to see. Okay, so then just like any other kind of internal compositing, I can erase around its edges. So you see the eye changes there. I can decide which one I like better. I like it better with the bigger eye, but I need to erase. Around it. And then with the glasses, maybe I composite those in. So how might that look? Let's see. What I can do is go to here, grab the glasses, copy them, paste them on with the eyes there, grow it big, <laughs> put them in. 
so weird. Then alter them a little bit, play with their colors, do the compositing skills we have. So levels, kind of make these a lot more colorful, a lot more contrasted. Really bring out those highlights for sure. And this might help me inform me with the eyes as well. Right. Then I can try a blending mode. Pin light's a little too weird. Soft light's getting there. Overlay. Mm -hmm. Lighten is interesting. Since it makes it look kind of like the glasses have um, that tint. And then darken looks best from a distance. So if I keep darken on, then I can work on my painting of the glasses over the top of it. So let me warp those. Warp to kind of fit where those glasses shapes should be. And it's just our brain processes organic things like faces very differently than mechanical things like glasses. This is kind of keeping you honest, right? And then I wonder about the saturation. I want to intensify. Yeah, maybe in the blue range. Lighten them up a little bit. Yeah, then I'm going to play with different opacity. Color dodge, that works really well. Linear dodge, that works pretty well. So it suggests the glasses while still keeping kind of the attitude of the painting. And now with a very light eraser, low opacity eraser, and I can even use the brush I designed for my eraser, but I have to go back to shape dynamics because it's for a new tool. But I can use my eraser just like I use my brush. These are all really good tricks. And that way I can kind of paint in reverse by erasing away things from the composited in eyes I don't think are as effective. And I can paint underneath. You know? Because my eyes got smaller and smaller as I painted around them. All right, so now little areas to finish off, and then I'll be good. Now, before I turn it in, I'm gonna take some time with it. It's always good to come back and look at it for more than just one sitting. And we'll turn these in next class, our digital paintings. I look forward to seeing them. And I'm just going to work on some of these little details because once you have those glasses in, it brings a level of detail that's not always matched everywhere else. You try to bring everything up to the same level of finish. Just more and more refined painting.
And now I get to steal from like sock colors and everything else. If you want to stay for lab hours, please sign in at the lectern. And it just gets easier and easier with practice. Now because we painted all these different layers, if you ever feel like you take it too far, you can always use that eraser, which is now on my painting brush, and take away and reveal the painting underneath. And if you're brave, you can even do that with some of the layers that we had done previously. Soccer. 